This is the big moment. We're gonna test it. Oh my god! Oh! Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that's in prison. This is literally like a feature we were talking about is now working, right? Like, honestly, it wasn't even that long we've been just looking at it. But it just works. So we just got a real feature we needed done by Copilot. Like, that is kind yeah. of crazy. Oh my wow. god. Give it another one. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feature Crew. Today we have a very exciting episode. After months and months of waiting, GitHub Copilot Workspace, which is a fully integrated end-to-end -end AI native development environment, is finally here. In some ways, this is the Copilot SQL, and it should be basically in, way, in ways that uh, Copilot fits into your existing workflow. A GitHub Copilot workspace is sort of redefining the workflow to be best for AI human collaboration. So we're really excited to give this a try. I've put some time into it playing around just so I know how it works, and it's been pretty impressive so far. So uh, we'll jump into two of our existing repos and show you how it works. All right, so first up, quick plug for uh, some of our recent videos. We've been using this tool that we built called NodeSpace to compare different models, and this is going to be the first thing that we point uh, Copilot Workspace at. It's an existing repo. It's got a bunch of different views um, and a bunch of different features, and so it's like sort of a sufficiently complex project to test a Copilot Workspace's ability to operate in an existing environment. So... To get started, every Copilot Workspace session starts from an issue. So we've created some issues to send off to Copilot Workspace, and we're going to start with an easy one. Currently, there's no way you can see to get back to the landing page that we started on. And so we're going to ask Copilot Workspace. So the issue we're giving to Copilot Workspace is that there's no way to get back to the landing, the landing page. And uh, we've been prescriptive here and tell it to add, add an entry point to the sidebar. So I start the session by clicking this open workspace button. It's going to make me sign in again. And then it gets to work proposing a solution. The current behavior stuff, it's giving you confidence that it understands the problem, right? I think confidence is something that's always struggled with in AI tools. So it, it's sort of showing its work here. I think it's, it's a really cool paradigm. Yep. And you can see it's correct. It recognized the different views that we have. It knows that the landing page component exists, right? And the proposed solution is to add a new menu item in the sidebar component. Now that we are confident in uh, the current behavior, its understanding and the proposed solution, we can tell it to go generate a plan. So this was a simple ask. And so the plan is only like one main step there. But uh, as you'll see later in the video, it can, the plans can be much more complex. And plans are always indexed on what files are going to be edited, add, change, that sort of thing. And then there are specific steps below each file or b below each like parent action that, that describe what workspace will actually go do. So this looks good. I'll ask it to implement the selected files. And we can see it added in uh, a menu item in the correct spot. And it also went ahead and selected an icon. So that's kind of cool. So uh, this looks good. Let's see if, let's make sure we're going to validate that it worked. So we're going to go right into, let's see open the commands. And when I open this command pane, what it does is in the background, it starts spinning up a code space for our repository. Let go get a coffee moment for uh, those following along at home. And so we can see it just finished setting up the code space and it also automatically generated, based on the content of the repo, it generated a command for us to use to start. So we'll just hit the run command button. So far, I haven't written any code, no commands. I'm just clicking buttons. And, and... All right, so we have it running in code space, and uh, it's being port forwarded, and I now have it open in the browser, and we can see that that new home All right. is added. So let's switch over to chat, and then we can switch back to home. Good job, Workspace. That's what I like to see. And compared to cursor and stuff, I mean, we'll have bigger issues in the next couple of minutes. But... This is so much more user intuitive, right? Like it's a much higher level of abstraction. You're starting with an issue. It's giving you plans. Humans are in the loop the entire way. You can imagine how this paradigm works for much harder classes of problems than just add this. But the fact that we can see it working even just out the box with something like this, it is all integrated, launches into code space. Pretty awesome. At no point did you really have to type code. You just clicked buttons all the way and now you have the product literally running in a tab. Didn't have to worry about any of the engineering stuff, just straight like getting some new feature in. Pretty crazy. 
So maybe this is a good time to uh, show how it works through maybe a little more complex of a problem. So I'm not actually going to merge this in because uh, I, I think I have a different idea for how I would add a, a way to get back to the landing page. So the next issue is to add an SVG generation space. So if you remember in the app, we have the ability to just chat. You can generate images, you can generate documents, you can generate plans, then these are parsed and uh, shown to the user. And so what we wanna do is add a similar space to the ones that we just walked through, but it will, the difference is that it shows SVGs that are generated by the models. So we'll need to handle both parsing the outputs as an SVG and then displaying them. This is actually a pretty, I would say, difficult task. The reason that I think it might be able to accomplish it is because a lot of the pieces, there's examples of a lot of the pieces in the code base. So I think we'll see, we'll give it a shot here with a pretty skimpy description um, and if it doesn't work right off the bat, then we might try coming back and giving it a more detailed description or some more guidance. So we can already see it working through the problem. It does understand the workspace pretty well. It understands that it's going to need to parse the message differently. I'd say already, like I, I'm maybe cynical on AI in a lot of views. That that comprehension is pretty impressive. I love that they show it. When we said that earlier, but it being able to understand the uh, abstract things it needs to do and then apply it specifically. Feels like a step. I mean, that, that feels really good. And regardless of whether it improves performance, it's a great way of building for the future, right? Because you're building like a reasoning step to be baked in, even if you get chain of thought reasoning like out the box. This just allows a human to feel good about it. It allows you to then have humans like kind of probably put things in a way that the LLM likes as well, right? That bullet pointed list as opposed to like, hey, here's a skimpy description. Now it's like, now you actually have all the things and it can like reason over it and so, and so on. So Pretty impressive stuff. Very, very good UX. UX that knows its audience, right? Like they're not trying to make this so that everybody understands it. If you're familiar with GitHub, it follows GitHub's practice. It understands how it works. It's going to integrate nicely into your workflow. I think there's a lot of boiling the ocean happening in the AI world, and this doesn't seem to be doing that, right? This is very scoped. You're already using this product. We're just up leveling how you can use it. And to Dylan's point, you're maybe expanding the people in your company that can use the platform effectively. So I've read through the plan here and I've noticed that it's trying to implement this SVG into the into the chat view, but I want to add a spe like a separate view for SVGs. So I'm going to give it some feedback on the plan and see how it updates the plan. Great. So it seems to have understood my feedback and it came back in and uh, I can actually just, it got a little confused with the feedback, so I'll get rid of that old legacy task. And I think this is good, so we'll give it a run and see how it does. Again, I didn't even notice that you could revise it like that. That's pretty cool. It's kind of similar to what we saw with Canvas. Having lots of different entry points for UX seems to be like a great first step, right? Like having human in the loop to be able to, instead of you having to edit each item, give it like a, a, a complete chat message to overall, or you can add item, like item level changes. I think that flexibility is like key at the moment, but we still figure out how to make the models like genuinely intelligent. Cool. Well, it finished implementing. And as we mentioned before, you know, it can handle a lot of files and a lot of changes in one go. So it just went through and changed like six or seven files and made a bunch of updates. So let's see when we open it in code space, how well it did, a little too hard for it. Good thing to show them. Specialty here on the channel, pushing the AI systems a little too far. Because this isn't going to run. I know it. So you're revising the plan to hopefully help it not mess up. Let's open and see how close it got. That is a cool URL, Super Chainsaw. Hey, okay, I got some. Well, let's see. It tried to put it in the chat though, right? All right, so now it looks like we're trying to actually create an SVG. We wanna see if it did anything. It definitely did something. It was maybe too big of a, uh, an ask. Let's have a look. No, so, I mean, this is, this is I mean, at least it's parsing, well, yeah, it's parsing the SVG mm -hmm. content block mm -hmm. as a separate thing, and then the explanation is a separate thing. It's not correctly displaying the markdown. That's a separate issue, right? Oh, so let's just give it some feedback to add a... So that time, it seems to pick up the top-level plan change. It correctly identified the file from what it seems, and it is adding a SVG, like basically like sidebar entry. So now we need to recompile and check it, but bullet hot reload? Yes, it does. Wow. Ooh, that, I mean, that is kind of cool. Now it's not going to work though, right? Like, so 
it tried to use an SVG generation model, like a hallucinated concept. And really what I wanted to do is use like a normal chat model to generate SVG text. So that was my first time here trying to actually like write out a step manually and then have it complete it. So it switched to GPT-40. So now let's see what that change, if it works. One of the things, we're not surprised this failed here, right? This is something we thought was a really hard task. It failed. Not overly surprising, but cool to see how it took a stab at it. It, it understood the problem, I think, better than I guess I would have thought it would. But implementing it was still, still a bridge too far for it. And Jacob is continuing to refine it. I mean, to be fair, like this is a, a serious or actual feature level problem, right, that you would probably give an engineer. And we're going ahead and actually trying to give it like incremental steps and adjustments to the plan to see if it can get there. The first shot of it, this is honestly not bad, right? Like I'm actually even impressed that it compiled and then it did something. That alone is pretty impressive. And on screen is a great showcase of how humans and AI can work together. Jacob's switching between the screens. He's making edits in different places, adding to the plan. <laughs> I think it's getting kind of close. I can see that classic, like it's so close to, to work. Something to do with it's not actually routing to the component. Potentially. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. There's no route. Hey, this is the big moment. We're going to test it. Oh my God. Oh, yes. hey. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so for context, we did do a little bit of debugging and helped it along the way. And we, we as humans physically had to help it. But that's impressive. This is literally like a feature we were talking about is now working, right? Like, honestly, it wasn't even that long we've been just looking at it. But it just works. So we just got a real feature we needed done by Copilot. Like, that is kind yeah. of crazy. Oh my wow. God. Give it another it one. Did. Do SVG of a cube. And for cube. folks looking, when he says no SVG content available, we were debugging. Don't worry about it. We'll do, we'll do a live stream <laughs> sometime, and you can watch us flounder and stuff like that. Oh, let's see how it does, too. Is it going to get rid of the smiley? Uh Interesting. That's how I mean, it, to do that. remember it was the latest, it, like filters for the latest message, right? So, yeah. Um. Anyway, we can iterate with it, but like it's awesome that it worked. And I mean, this cube is kind of sus, but that's more on the the four O generation side. Very very cool. Yeah. This is just, and as Dylan was saying, like this is something that that issue I had had sitting in the repo for weeks. Like I just haven't gotten around to it. So the fact that we did it in the time of recording this video, and I can go clean it up later, and like have this feature and make more videos for you guys comparing, you know, how different models can generate SVGs. Like, this is pretty incredible. And like, and, awesome. and we did do some manual debugging, but it was mostly manual thinking. I only wrote one line of code and Copilot could have done it easily, right? So it was like, I, it needed some human assistance on the, okay, like the debugging front of I made a first attempt, it's not quite working, what are the errors? Like, what are the changes we need to make? Very impressive though. And on top of that, with the whole GitHub flavor, you're now going to make a pull request and then we can collaborate together, which is like the name of the game, right? Like really this did probably cut time to actually get a feature out. Um, it did a lot of the kind of like manual heavy lifting. Of course, things don't always work. Like if you've worked in enterprise like code, like collaborating is like mainly what you do. You put a pull request, you get comments, you work together, you debug. The <laughs> spaceship, a little bit disconnected, but still, this is incredible stuff. Like, imagine it can be any SVG, image spaces, stuff like that. Like, so, so cool. And the fun thing with AI is, like, this is the worst it'll ever be. Right? Like, it just gets better from here. So you got your chain of thought reasoning. You got, you got newer models coming out. This just gets better and better. So to be even here right now is wild. Also, I just multi-turned with it. I don't know if you noticed that. I said add kind more windows crazy. and it added yeah, more yeah, yeah. windows to the existing. Anyways, let's, so this was really impressive. Uh, I, now I'm just like, wow, like we made something that I want to play with. I was like, can we make like logos for feature crew? Can we like do something right. like that? Like how far could you push it? And then, like, it's kind of meta, like AI making something that we then want to create with. Very, very cool stuff. Look, this, this is a realistic UX for getting actual work done on an existing code base. I think Replit and Bolt were all like, let's assume you're starting from scratch which isn't super relevant to most of the day-to-day -day work you have to do as an engineer. Yeah. And they clearly are spending the time right now, which is exactly where you should, nailing the UX, nailing the UI, nailing the building user trust, nailing the iterative development, making editing super easy, making it very clear. If they can nail that, then they can work on the assumption that the model is going to get better. They're going to slot in the next great model. They're going to slot in 
whatever the next great innovation is. Well, you heard it here first on the Cre- Feature Crew. A new a coding AI king has been crowned. Very exciting. GitHub Copilot Workspace, hats off. Hats off to the team. It's just important to acknowledge that, you know, while we, the feature crew, do work at Microsoft, this is not, this channel's not affiliated with Microsoft, not affiliated with the GitHub team at all, other than saying hi on Twitter. We don't have any sort of connection with them. So, you know, we just really love this and are excited to continue using it and excited to con- to see it continue to get even better. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here, boys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Like and subscribe, as always. And we'll have a lot more fun content with you, including some year-end review stuff coming up. So definitely check it out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks so much.